Hello and welcome to today's postgrad insights session. Today focusing on London student accommodation specialists, Urbanest, which will feature a special guest appearance from King's College London. Before I begin today's presentation about postgrad.com and the different opportunities we've got available, a few house rules, if you like. So if you have any issues or any questions or concerns throughout this session, please do ensure you put this in the comments tab at the bottom of the page. Alternatively, if you're unable to do that, please email gareth at postgradsolutions.com. There will be a Q&A at the end of this session, not only with Urbanest from Matt from Urbanest, but there'll also be a King's College London representative as well for any questions that you might have. And if we don't get around to any questions that um, are not answered, we will ensure that we reach out to you afterwards. And also as well, by signing up and by viewing today's session, you give consent to Urbanest and Postgrad to share your information with each other to liaise to work out what's best for you. Now on to postgrad.com and, and what you're going to see today. So we're going to explain all things postgrad. Um, we're also going to explain um, what opportunities we've got for bursaries. We've got a 500 pound opportunity for you guys, in addition to a fantastic offer that Urbanest have got later in the presentation. Um, I mentioned the presentation from Urbanest and King's College that'll be on its way, along with upcoming insights and of course, that Q&A. So what does postgrad.com have to offer? So we've got over 10 million students that have used our website to find the perfect postgraduate programme. They've come from all over the globe, 200 different countries, partnerships with high calibre international scholarship providers, such as the Chevening and the Marshall uh, scholarships, which are very high calibre, uh, very sought after, and applications are currently open now. So we are the exclusive search engine on both those websites. So please feel free to go straight through to um, postman.com, Chevening or Marshall. We offer the, the best advice really and, and all things postgraduate um, accommodation, which you're about to hear about, visas, careers, English language support, and, and so much more than that, making it the one-stop shop for everything postgraduate related. Um, which brings me on nicely to something that we offer, which is called our, our bursary scheme, which we offer 2,500 pound bursaries for you to take off your tuition costs. Now, any student can actually sign up to this, whether you're full-time, part-time, whether you're a student starting in January 2021, January 22, or it could even be right now in the next couple of weeks. Um, you can be from any country studying at any university. Distance learning opportunities are available as well. And please get your application in by the end of next month, which is the 30th of September 2021. Now, that's my bit done from postgrad. Um, I'd like to hand over to Matt Felix now, who is a Urbanest representative. He will be talking through everything there is to know about Urbanest, um, as well as playing a presentation from King's College London, which is pre-recorded. But I will be back at the end for the Q&A. And Matt, any issues, let me know. But over to you. Thank you very much for that. Um, so hi everyone, yeah, my name is, uh, is indeed Matt. Um, I work for Urbanest and yeah, let me just uh, crack on with this presentation. Bear with me with the uh, technical trying to share my screen bits, uh, but yeah, should be, should be up and running in just a sec. Ah, nice and easy. All right, cool. Um, let, me, uh, let me crack on then. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, my name is Matt Felix. I look after the, uh, the sales and marketing over at Urbanest um, and I'll be here today talking to you a bit about Urbanest and then also introducing a presentation on behalf of King's College, who are one of our partner universities that we work very closely with uh, to look after their students. Um, so first of all, a little bit about Urbanest. This is what we'll be covering today. Um, just a bit of an intro of who we are um, and how we operate within sort of London, our, our sort of main sector. Um, the room types that we have, um, what you can expect and experience whilst you're living with us, and then uh, covering any questions that you might have a bit later in the session. So Urbanest is a student accommodation provider working solely in Zone 1 Central London. Um, we've been operating since 2009 um, and um, since then we've opened uh, seven buildings with an eighth coming uh, this academic year starting September. So in a, in a few weeks time, which we're very excited about. Um, we sort of operate by building um, accommodations close to universities and 
uh, forming close relationships with uh, the universities that um, that we work with, um, and also you know having the best rooms possible, uh, which hopefully I'll uh, I'll be able to tell you about a bit later on. So um, we like to think of ourselves as a little bit different, uh, student living made better. Um, so the way that we um, sort of quite a bold claim, but we can back it up by stating that we have, you know, 24 hour on site support. It's always someone around and, and those people that are around um, are great, um, insightful about the area that they work in, about how to get to and from uni or anything else that you want to ask questions about. Um, we'll basically look after you all the way through, make it very easy for you to live with us with all inclusive rents and parcel collections. And of course, we'll make sure that you feel safe um, and we'll do that with um, COVID secure protocols that we have in place and, and making sure that the environment in which you live is nice and secure. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just um, run a little bit of a video and hopefully outlining a little bit about what I've, uh, what I've spoken about just now. Sorry about that. One second.
right. Thanks very much, everyone. Um, so we'll crack on with the presentation if that's okay. Uh, if we can. Oh, for goodness sake. Sorry about this. There we go. So um, hopefully uh, that gave you a bit of an insight into, into who we are as a, as a business and how we like to look after our residents. Um, but yeah, let me just talk a little bit more about it, I guess. Um, so as I mentioned a couple of times already, something that we're quite proud about is um, our relationship with the universities in London. Um, so here are a few of the universities that we work very, very closely with. Now, obviously, um, as you can see on there, King's is up there, uh, and that's probably one of our strongest relationships. I'm sure Christy will agree later. We have a number of beds um, for students um, at King's University, King's College, sorry. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we've had a really strong relationship with them for a number of years now. Also up there, LSE, UCL, uh, UAL, some of the biggest universities in London. Um, but that's not all. Um, you know, we also have really tight and strong relationships with some of the smaller institutions and a number of the postgrad specific institutions um, within London. Um, so yeah, essentially we like to maintain those close relationships and build that trust with the university. And hopefully um, they can pass on that trusting word uh, to, to you guys who are looking to, to study there. So um, a little bit about the, uh, the room types that we have here at Urban S, if that's okay. Um, so we have a number of room types, um, namely twin rooms, um, where you share a, a room with another person. Private rooms, where you have your own room, but you share two bathrooms between three people normally. Ensuite rooms, where you have your own room, your own bathroom, and then you share a kitchen with a number of people in the flat. And then uh, studio rooms, which I'll go on to speak in a bit more detail about later. Um, all of these rooms, regardless of the type, have all-inclusive rents and bills and utilities, uh, 200 megabytes of Wi-Fi, um, and then we pride ourselves in having loads of um, storage space in each of the rooms and lots of desk space so you can really sort of make the most of your time in your room. Um, and all of the fixtures and fittings um, throughout um, all of our properties are sort of modern and well-kept and up-to-date uh, just to make it living there a little bit easier. So um, I just want to touch on the studios that we have at Urban S, um, something that we call the studio collection. A number of different properties across London, um, our, our portfolio in London have studios. And I just want to talk about what makes them special. Um, for, namely, um, they're perfect for postgraduates, we feel. Um, quite a lot of our studios are inhabited by postgraduates for a number of different reasons. Um, but I guess these are the main ones um, outlined here. As I mentioned earlier, loads of storage space and loads of desk space. You know, you will be studying quite a lot in these rooms, um, especially if you're a postgraduate, you want to get your head down and get on with things. So we, we realized that, so we tried to make those desks a little bit bigger, bigger so you can spread your work out a bit and more storage space so you don't feel quite as crammed um, in your room. Um, one of the benefits of them is it's super independent and private, you know, and you can just get on with what you want to get on with, really. Um, it's a, a, a space where you can um, sort of be who you want to be and work how you want to work, and that's obviously super important. Um, but not just that, I mean, it's not you're not an island whilst you're living with us. There are um, great social spaces at all of our buildings um, and events that we put on to make you feel like part of, um, part of something bigger than yourself while you're in London. And once again, everything's beautifully well appointed and, um, and up to date and modern. Um, and best of all, at the moment, up until the end of August, we are running a promotion um, on, on studios. So if you book up until then, you will receive a £400 Amazon voucher when you check in, which is obviously fantastic. Um, you know, it's it, it, just that little bit of extra cash if you want to, I don't know, buy it, spend it on boring things like books and supplies, or if you want to have a bit of fun with it, um, it's up to you. Uh, that's yours to, yours to spend. It's uh, applicable on studio bookings at City, Hoxton, King's Cross, and Tower Bridge. Um, if you have any more questions about that or want more info, you can always uh, get in touch with me at the end of this session. So, um, talks about the room types, let's talk about where those rooms are. Um, so these are the eight buildings that we have in London. Um, so they're all over Zone 1 Central London. We pride ourselves on being super central. Um, there's buildings down just south of the river like Vauxhall and Westminster Bridge, and then ones more central like um, uh, Victoria, which is obviously sort of near Big Ben and places like that. Um, and then places a bit more east central, which is part of the slightly more interesting part of London that I live in personally, and that's Hoxton and Tower Bridge and, and the new one city. Uh, and then of course, ones near King's Cross St Pancras Station, you might have guessed it, uh, King's Cross and St Pancras. Um, basically we have a buildings all in zone one London and they're all at only about half an hour commute maximum to your university, um, if it's one of the main ones in central London. 
Now, for those of you who live in London, you know that that's very good. Uh, and those of you who don't, you will soon realize uh, if you come to London that that is indeed uh, pretty damn close. So I just want to talk a little bit about Urban S City, being seeing as it is the brand new one and that we're really excited about. Um, so it really is going to be one of our most special buildings, if not the most special building. Um, it's right in the sort of the heart of the financial district of London. It's a feature of the skyline, um, but also it's really close to the Tower of London and Tower Bridge. Um, so it's sort of well connected to sort of the historical monuments of the city, um, as well as being close to loads of tube links to get to university or other parts of the city, or indeed um, places to go out like Brick Lane and, and Shoreditch are about 15, 20 minute walk away. So really, really well located. Um, at this property, we are predominantly um, sort of setting it up as a postgraduate accommodation. Now that's, um, I'm talking sort of 90% postgraduate, so it's going to be really, really like-minded individuals in there with you if you do decide to move in. Uh, and at that building, we have private rooms, en suites, as well as the studio rooms that I mentioned earlier. In terms of the communal spaces, we have um, a comm room on the 14th floor with panoramic views, uh, study areas, um, and a cafe, and most excitingly, a part of the original Roman wall um, actually within the building that we made a small museum out of. It's, it's brilliant. If you're excited about that sort of stuff like I am, um, you do want to check it out. It's also open to the public if you just want to come down and see. Um, and as I mentioned, it really is the sign of postgrads in mind. Um, you know, it's going to be uh, it's going to be fantastic. We're really excited about it and uh, hopefully um, you will be too. So whilst you're a student at Urbanest, um, obviously we try to make sure that you're making the most out of your experience with us. Um, and the way that we do that is through a welfare and social program. And that's everything from welcome events and welcome parties to um, mental health um, talks and, 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 web, and seminars and webinars, um, sexual health, very similar, and sort of exam preparation. And by that, I mean not preparing for an exam. It's the mental strain that that, that time of the year has on everyone and how to deal with that. Um, and then obviously um, we do fitness things as well, like running clubs, which have been very popular, um, and then sort of gym um, in some of our buildings and, and uh, Zumba and yoga classes uh, for those who wanna get involved as well. Um, and obviously, as I mentioned earlier, we like to uh, make sure that all of our residents are very safe and secure. And at the moment, that obviously means, unfortunately, still um, uh, COVID security. So obviously, you know, it's not so much a mandate anymore, but we like to, um, to follow guidelines. We would sort of ask our residents and our staff um, to do the same. And that means all those basic things that come second nature to all of us these days. Just make sure that you continue doing that and looking after your fellow residents like you would at any point, you know, it would be nice to be part of a community, not just within the building, but uh, as a wider whole. And um, so just nice to um, to continue doing that. And as I've mentioned a couple of times, that also includes, um, you know, key fob entry to make sure everything's very secure. Only you can get into your room um, and then people on, on reception 24 hours a day. So just to make sure that the building is very safe um, and then CCTV through all the common rooms just to make sure exactly the same that everyone's well looked after. Um, so that's it from me. Um, what I'm going to do now, um, obviously we'll do any questions at the end, but I'm going to start up the King's College presentation. Um, so that it's been recorded a few months ago. Um, so uh, there is maybe some of the dates might not be exactly right, but a lot of the information will be. So it will be pertaining to this academic year. If you still want to get into King's College and you still want to um, apply for accommodation, it's not too late. I believe you can still do so. Um, you can talk to Chris about that at the end. If not, you can speak to me. But also it's good information and good to know for, for, for following years as well. If you're thinking about going for the 22, 23 academic year. But let me, um, let me just boot that up for you. Um, and then I'll uh, sit back and relax and, uh, and watch it along with you. Hi everyone, I'm Alex. And I'm going to take you through a little bit about how the booking process works at King's Residences and what it's like to live with us. If you want to ask questions at any point throughout the presentation, please feel free to do so in the questions tab. And we'll try to get through as many as possible at the end. So firstly, we're a bit different from lots of other unis in that our residences operate on a booking system rather than an application system. So what this means is that you'll log on and physically select the exact room you want to book kind of like an Airbnb or choosing a seat on a flight. The whole process should take you no more than around five to 10 minutes. So the first thing you'll want to do is make sure you've done your research. This will mean that when you come to book, it'll be as quick and easy as possible. The only thing to bear in mind is that some residences are only available to particular contract lengths or student types, like postgrad or undergrad, for example. 
So that's why it's important to have done your research beforehand so you don't get your heart set in any particular residence. It's also worth bearing in mind that some residences are vastly more popular than others, so do manage your expectations. Stamford Street Apartments, for example, is hugely oversubscribed and only available to undergraduates. So it's important to keep an open mind and think a little outside the box. You may decide to compromise slightly on location or facilities for a lower price or pay a little more for your own self-contained space. But we have a full range of prices, styles and room types available for postgraduates. For Mortchard Lyle and Iris Brook, which is exclusively for postgrads and sits right on Guy's campus at the heart of London Bridge, to the more traditional style halls at Wolfson House, which is an affordable option in an amazing location, as well as newer, more modern residences at Vauxhall and Atlas for a more high rise style of living. For the first time this year, though, we're introducing a second brand new exclusively postgraduate space as part of a pioneering Grad Plus programme. We know that our postgrad residents have their own unique needs and aspirations. This is why we created Grad Plus, which is a postgraduate living experience designed specifically for you. So for 2021, we'll be introducing this new premium residential experience by launching City, a newly built high spec residence in the historic city of London. City will be the ultimate way to experience postgraduate living, and the Grad Plus philosophy will be aimed at the independent semi-professional looking for a new type of student accommodation. Perhaps you're a more mature student or taking a career break, or maybe you're just looking for something a bit more high-end. At City, as part of Grad Plus, we'll be hosting private networking events, talks from notable figures, and opportunities to interact with local businesses in the financial district. We'll also have an exceptional concierge service and you'll receive personalised support from the King's Residency team throughout your journey. Once you've got an idea of where you'd like to live, it's time to book your room. To explain how it works, we've broken the process down into four really simple steps on how to complete your booking. Step one, register your interest. Step two, receive an invite to book. Step three, book your room. Step four, sign your contract and make your prepayment. And that's it. It's much easier than applying for accommodation and waiting for an offer, and it gives you a lot more freedom. Before we go into a little more detail, we'll start by taking a look at this video on how the process works. Booking your university accommodation with King's Residences Online takes less than five minutes. And it's simple. 
so simple that it almost didn't need a video to explain it. But here goes anyway. All you have to do is follow four easy steps. Step one, register your interest. If you're coming to study at KCL, visit our website and register for accommodation by providing just a few details. Step two, receive an invite. Once you've registered, you'll receive an invitation email within two weeks. The invite will give you a date and time you can access the booking system and you can log on at any time from this date. Before you receive your invite, you should take some time to research all the different accommodations on offer and pick your favourites. When the date in your invitation arrives, step three, book your room. Log into our booking system. You can now select some criteria like room type and budget and the system will generate all the rooms and residences available to you. The log status will show how long we're holding your chosen room for. Then, just book it. It only takes a few clicks. Step four, sign your contract. Remember to check the total cost of your accommodation before signing your contract to make sure it fits your budget. Ask whoever's supporting you if you're not sure. Then, once you've signed, you're all done. If you change your mind later on, you can change your booking. But remember, this can only be done once. And that's it. Now your room is booked, you can look forward to an exciting year at KCL. You can join our social media groups and start making friends and meeting your future neighbors. And of course, if you need any help or information, the residence team is always here to help. So the first thing to do is register your interest in accommodation. You'll find the link to do this on the accommodation web pages. Remember though, you'll need to wait 48 hours after firming your academic offer with Kings before you can register. Also, pay close attention to the accommodation guarantee deadline and make sure you can complete your booking in full before the deadline. To clarify this, the accommodation guarantee basically guarantees you a place at least somewhere across Kings residences if you're eligible and complete all four steps of the booking process by the 18th of June. You can check out the full eligibility criteria for the guarantee on our web pages. The registration stage is also at the point at which you can apply for any additional accommodation requirements if you have a serious medical condition that may, for example, require any adaptations or reasonable adjustments to be made to your room. Once you've completed your registration, you'll receive an invite to book email within two weeks. This email will contain a date and time from which you can access the accommodation portal to book your room. And you'll be able to access the system at any point from that date. Remember, you should use the time between registration, invite and access to check out all our residences and make a list of your favorites because not all will be available. Once you have access to the system, you'll be able to see what's available to book. The system will already recognize the appropriate contract length for you based on your course type. And don't worry, it's not a strictly first come first serve based system as rooms are released gradually throughout the booking period to ensure fairness for all. If you don't see somewhere you like, I'd recommend checking the system a couple of times to see how availability changes. But be careful not to hold out for a particular residence and risk losing out on anything that's currently available. Finally, choose a room, sign your contract and make your prepayment. Remember to check that you can afford the total cost of your accommodation before accepting an agreement. And do make sure to have already read a copy of the terms and conditions of accommodation, which will form your contract or license agreement before confirming. This is to make sure you fully understand the terms, especially because the booking system is on a timer, so you won't get a chance to read through the whole document before you press confirm. You can access a copy of these terms and conditions at any point from the accommodation web pages. At this point, you'll be asked to make a rent prepayment of £450 in order to secure your room. But this prepayment will be offset against the first instalment of rent due in October. And that's it. You're done. On your main menu of the accommodation portal, you have the option to apply for any additional accommodation requirements retrospectively if necessary. You can also choose to change your room, but this can only be done once. 
and be careful not to cancel your accommodation unless you're absolutely sure. Once you're in-house, you'll have access to our amazing Resi Life program or the Grad Plus program if you book a room at City. Although mainly aimed at undergraduates, Resi Life is something for everyone. It's a social engagement initiative run by a team of community facilitators who are students just like you. Set up to help build communities through social events and new experiences, residents can come together to share interests, learn new things and make friends for life. At the moment, the programme is running online and you can get an idea of some of the events you've been running by finding King's Residences on YouTube. Resi Life also includes your dedicated team of welfare leads who live on site to help look out for you during your stay. They are on call and specially trained to support you, whether you just need a chat or something more urgent. And lastly, let's take a look at what life is like in residences in this video. I was really nervous moving to London because it's very different from where I'm from. When I chose London to be my destination to do my master's, I was fantasized by the idea of a big city and how beautiful London is. I was packing like maybe a month earlier, which I never actually do. Before moving into London, the emotions I was definitely feeling the most were apprehension, followed very closely by excitement. King's College has asked me to speak about my time here at King's Hall. To give you a sense of living in, in such a big city like London. To move in for the first time, so hopefully by the end of this video, you'll kind of know what to expect. My accommodation is located in Southwark. I live in Stratford and there's so many things to do here, like go to Westfield or check out the Olympic Park. Just 30 seconds out of my accommodation, and there is London Bridge Station, which can pretty much take me anywhere in London. And just over there is the Shard. Budgeting is definitely something you have to keep in mind when you move to London. My name is a very expensive city, especially for students. I made sure I used all the student discounts that were available to me. There's always somewhere nearby that sells something that little bit more affordably. Just as an example, there's a Tesco literally about five minutes walk from here, but I walk about 10 minutes a little and buy what I need for about half the price. It's very important that you start your planning way ahead before your course starts. <laughs> For me, when I was moving to London, I really had to consider location. I had to think about where I would be located in comparison to what I wanted to be nearby. You have to ask yourself questions like, how far do I want to travel? What sort of amenities does it give me living at this place? Whether I want to share or have an ensuite? How big are the kitchens you're going to be sharing? All the details you can look up in advance. The more flexible you are, the cheaper your accommodation is going to be. So if you choose to share a bathroom, then it's going to be cheaper than having an ensuite. It's all about trying to balance what you're getting with how much you're willing to pay for it. It's up to you to decide what you can and can't live without. It's good to give up some things for the sake of saving some money. So if you prefer to have your own things, you need to be aware that this will be of a cost. <laughs> Although private housing has its benefits, I prefer student accommodations because I've run to meet and know so many different people from all over the world and because I don't have to worry about paying different fees because you only have to pay one lump sum fee. So the most important difference I noticed between private housing and student accommodation is safety. And for me, safety is a very important element since I just moved from a very small city to a big city. So if I was moving into London for the first time, as I was, I would actually definitely pick student accommodation for private just because there's always someone at the front desk. If there's a problem, you can always go down, there's security staff all over the place. Otherwise, it can be um, inconvenient having to deal with all of the issues, stuff like the estate and agents do actually charge you for finding your house, getting your keys sorted out, that kind of thing. It's not much, but it's definitely not an obviously evident cost. I found it really difficult to pay different bills when I lived in private housing because I'd always have to remind myself or put reminders on my phone that, oh, this bill is due on this day. I think living in private accommodation is a lot more about 
cooperation and organization between you and the people you live with? It took me almost two weeks to find a place to stay in when I first moved here, which is a private accommodation I was in. And this was such a stressful period for me. For somebody who just moved from their home country to London, it was it, it would have been very convenient if I just chose King's College accommodation from the beginning. I would want to come to London not being as stressed as I was, but rather find everything prepared for me and everything ready for me to start on my journey in London. When I first moved in to now, I feel really confident in being a Londoner, if you will, and actually knowing the city and exploring the city. I just think I'm better off for coming here. I'm definitely a lot more unflappable, I'd say. Expect the unexpected, but <laughs> deal with it as it comes. I would really, really recommend anyone who wants to get out of their comfort zone and try something absolutely new and absolutely insane at the same time is to try and live in London and choose London, if you can, as your destination for education. Thanks for watching and we look forward to welcoming you soon. Okay, let's see if I can stop sharing my screen. How do I do that? Well, so, thank you, Matt. I think I've done that for you there. Does that work for you? Cheers, buddy. Thank you very much. Um, so we will now engage with a Q&A. That was very insightful, so thank you very much. Not just to yourself, Matt, but to uh, King's College for the pre-recorded presentation as well. Um, there's been plenty of questions fly through on social media as well, which I'm sure you would half expect given the COVID circumstances and everything else. But um, at this stage, um, I'd like to welcome uh, into the frame the, um, my co Matt's colleague and partner, um, Christy, who works for King's Bunch. Now, I'd like to hand over to Christy just quickly just to introduce herself um, because uh, her job title is quite unique and I think it would be interesting to find out exactly uh, what department she sits under and how it is she can help. So, so Christy, over to you. Thanks, Barry. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Christy. I work for uh, the allocation team Kings Residences at Kings College London. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here today. I hope the presentation gives you some uh, information about how the accommodation booking usually works at Kings. And hopefully you got some useful tips from King students about living in London. Excellent. Thank you for that, Christy. So look, I'm, I'm going to start with one of the, the main pressing questions. We had a couple of questions like this um, that people were asking already before they'd signed up. Um, but obviously it's been streaming through on social media is with COVID at the moment, the red list countries, um, it, you know, it, it's more of an impact on those students at the moment. Obviously, from my knowledge, the, the local government guidance is they'd have to isolate for 10 days in accommodation. What kind of support do you, do you both offer really um, to students that are A, going to struggle to come over here and B, is it possible at the moment? Um, if I start with yourself, Matt, which is quickly from an Urban S perspective. Yeah, sure. So. Um, obviously not 100% sure around the, the red uh, list countries. I think there is a sort of protocol that you have to do it independently. You have to go to one of these hotels uh, to self-isolate. But um, in terms of people that are coming over from um, from overseas and do need to self-isolate for whatever reason, even you know ambulance uh, people still need to self-isolate, we are more than happy to help you with that. So what we will do uh, when you check in, everything's contactless. You don't have to actually sort of interact with anyone when you check in. Just let us know that you'll be self-isolating. Um, we'll make a note of that on our systems. You go up to your room and then um, you pretty much stay there for as long as you need to. And what we'll do to support you through that is bring up your food deliveries, bring up your um, deliveries of anything else that you're getting. Um, but most importantly, we think is give you a call uh, periodically through your time just to make sure that everything's OK. You know, obviously, we appreciate that being by yourself for that amount of time is, is no fun at all. So we want to make sure that you are um, safe and secure, but also that you are um, you're still well. You're still happy and um, anything that we can do to support we're more than happy to do uh, we've put on extra staff during those first busy weeks as well just to make sure that we can accommodate all those calls and all those requests and to make sure that you are as comfortable as you possibly can be when you move in okay excellent and christy from a king's perspective um what is it you guys are doing anything really to add to that i know you'll kind of do all that already but um what else do you guys offer yeah so if you're traveling from a red list country 
uh, according to the government's um, uh, policy, you will have to quarantine for 10 days in a managed quarantine hotel and take two COVID tests. So once uh, the quarantine ends, then you can check into residences. Um, and, you know, just like Matt mentioned, you know, all the support, um, you know, from the front desk team and uh, at King's, um, we will also call you to check on you and uh, you can um, access to um, the welfare team. They will be there to have a chat online and to, you know, um, support you that anything you need, like emotionally. So for those who um, are not going to isolate in a hotel, um, you might be able to isolate in uh, in King's residences in your room, and uh, we will provide you with um, uh, the first three days. I will provide provide like some basic food packages for you, and uh, the onsite team will more than happy to you know deliver uh, food or um, parcels to your room. So yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, I, I hope that answers everyone that's watching, especially in social media, that has asked that question in a roundabout way. Um, I'm sure you can imagine plenty of people have been saying, you know, I'm, I'm from certain country X, Y and Z. Can I come? And they're all panicking. And I understand that London's a very cosmopolitan city and they're, they're bound to want to come to London and the UK. Um, my next question really would be aimed towards both of you, but um, more towards Kings, really. Um, so from a scholarship perspective, um, how do you go about um, gaining a scholarship through King's College? Obviously, the, the third party scholarships, which I've mentioned already through the likes of Chevening and Marshall and, and even the postgrad 500 pound bursary, little things like that. But is there anything that you guys offer so that, you, you know, your average student from abroad and from the UK can can gain? Right. So um, the majority of postgraduate students pay their uh, tuition fees through uh, private sources. So um, if you are a prospective uh, student and you're looking into options, um, you can find information about student foundings on King's website and to see whether there's any scholarships you can apply. So just check our website and the search student founding KCL. Okay, and Matt, just I suppose it kind of blends on nicely from that question, really. Um, is there any differences in cost, depending on whether you're a UK or an international student to to obviously live in one of your stylish apartments or studios? Sure, yeah, absolutely not at all. So um, if you're from Durham or you're from, um, you know, um, India, wherever you're from the world, it's exactly the same price. Obviously, it keeps it fair for everyone. Um, but most importantly, um, you know, it, it gives everyone the opportunity to stay with us, which we, which we really want to really want to make sure everyone has. Yeah. Um, but crucially as well, um, even past that, you know, um, people think that we have an instalment plan. So to make it easier to pay through the year, People always assume that you have to pay more for that. You don't. It's exactly the same. And also, we do require a guarantor, like pretty much everyone, um, when you come to the UK to study and, and, and live with us. Um, but um, the vast, vast majority of people will require a UK guarantor, um, especially the private accommodations like us. We do not. You can have anyone from anywhere in the world. So uh, your parent or guardian is absolutely fine. Um, so, yeah, we just try to make it as easy as possible um, and painless as possible and as fair as possible, crucially. Excellent. And obviously, just to put people's mind at ease a little bit during these difficult times for everyone. Um, if you're an international student at the moment, and this is aimed to both of you, really, um, what's the split at the moment? You know, you obviously get a lot of international students come over to London and to obviously um, study and to live um, in one of your apartments. Um, I'm guessing you get a lot of international students. Um, you know, do students feel alone at any point? Is it a case of, I'd imagine if you're from Australia, for instance, it can get quite lonely. Um, is there anything you guys have got in place as a university, as an institution to, to help out those students, you know, socially? Um, I'll take that one first, if that's okay then. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously our, our, our business model, we have mostly international students and that was true last year, it's true this year, it's been true every, every year that I've worked here. It's about 70% international students. Um, which is obviously great. It's fantastic that there's that many students that, um, that still want to come and, and live in London, especially yeah. this year. Um, but yeah, as a result, we are geared up to look after people um, in that sense. So there's obviously um, sections of communities that um, want to spend a lot of time with each other. And that's absolutely fine. We do specialised events uh, to make sure that um, you know people are happy whilst they're living there. And in terms of you know people that may be a bit, um, a bit lonely, you know, people that have all their family and friends in Australia, 
you know, the, the, I don't want to say that the onus is on the university at all, but, you know, you go to your university mostly for, for support with that, but we can help as well. And the way that we'll do that is um, by little things like making sure, you know, um, if you want to come down to reception and talk to us, we're always there. We're always going to come and be able to help you with that sort of stuff. Um, and even little things like um, having 200 meg Wi-Fi means that you can you can connect with people overseas on, on platforms like Zoom and stuff like that. So we try to make um, it as, as easy as possible um, and we will make sure that you are as happy as possible. If you if you come to us a problem, we're going to address it as best we can. Um, and if we can't address it, we'll advise the people that can. Um, and we understand that, you know, especially in this day and age and especially international students, um, being alone is, um, is, is, is more real than ever. Um, and so, yeah, we want to make sure that um, the people try to um, sort of minimise that as much as possible. And uh, just one more question. Sorry, Christy. Um, we will get around to a couple of questions for Kings in a second because it will just blend on nicely from this one. Um, obviously, the, the cost of student accommodation at the moment can prove quite difficult because of obviously the circumstances. Um, in terms of incentives, what are you guys doing at the moment? Obviously, you've got the £400 Amazon voucher that you mentioned in your presentation. One of the questions we've had already come through is, A, you put on there a deadline of the 31st of August, I think mm -hmm. it is. Do they have to actually sign up by then or do they just have to register interest? Um, and B, the second one would be, um, is there any kind of financial incentive um, to um, commit any earlier? So if there was to commit before the end of September, is there an early bird rate that you guys offer? Sure. OK, so um, this sort of rate is for moving in this September. So it's actually like pretty much the end of the cycle, yeah. end of, end of okay. the year. But in terms of registering, if, yeah, if you register before the 31st and you go on to book a few days later, absolutely fine. We're still honouring that. We'll still have that shiny £400 waiting for you when you get in. Yeah. Um, but in terms of early bird incentive, um, we do offer occasionally for specific properties, um, uh, rebooker incentives, and we do occasionally offer price reductions or price freezes. Um, but you know, it's um, that we we uh, we'd love to be able to to be um, as helpful as possible. But uh, the the buildings are super popular and they go super super quickly. What is one of the benefits is if you book through your university rather than booking through us directly. All those universities that I mentioned earlier that we work very closely with, you do get um, a reduction in price. Um, thanks to the lovely people at Kings and the lovely people at LSE who negotiate that with us. So it's definitely more cost effective to book through your university. And I guess finally, what I would say is we offer mostly quite long contracts. If and we do occasionally on specific room types at specific buildings, offer shorter contracts, which obviously reduces the price overall. Excellent, um, Christy. Two questions for you, um, and then we'll have to we'll wrap it up. I'm, I'm aware that many of you guys are, are asking questions on social media. A lot of them have been answered already through a roundabout way, but obviously Matt and and potentially Christy will get in touch with you as well at a later point. Uh, but Christy, two two questions for you, probably more broadly around uh, postgraduate learning and kings. Um, so firstly. Um, do you offer any distance learning opportunities? Obviously, I know it's not fully associated with, um, you know, Matt's objective here with regards to Urban Est, but obviously we've got to be fair to all our students. Um, is that opportunity available if, if it should arise that, you know, if you're from a red list country that is too difficult to come to the UK and it's just not appropriate at this moment in time? Right, uh, thank you. So I think in terms of like, uh, I think you're referring to if they can learn remotely, if they can't yeah. do King's Residences. So this is, uh, you have to, uh, you know, talk to your faculty and to seek if uh, there's a po possibility that you can learn remotely for like term one, or maybe come over, um, you know, to King's Residences at term two. Um, so once you have, uh, you know, contacted your faculty and you reach an agreement, you should, uh, you know, contact us at King's Residences as soon as possible to discuss your options if you are a contract holder. Because um, at the moment, like all of our contracts, I mean, unless, unless you're study abroad student coming only for one term, um, you know, all the contract starts from September. So, um, you know, I think I would say like communication is most important. You should, uh, if you're a contract holder and, uh, you know, as, as we all know, London pretty much has lifted all the restrictions. So if you are able to arrive at King's, then obviously we will follow, you know, COVID 
rules from the government and trying to provide a safe environment for all of you. But if you have any hesitations or if you are facing visa problem, um, you know, just do not uh, hesitate to contact us and we will, um, you know, one of the team members will, will uh, let you know um, your options. Absolutely. And, and just to finish up as well, Ness, so one more broader question, really. Um, in, you mentioned it in the video, um, pre-recorded video about obviously the magnitude of King's College and, you know, everything that it means to study in London and whatnot. Um, what are the key subject areas for you guys at the moment and faculty areas? As you can imagine, we on postgrad.com see a large presence of students looking to study the likes of business and law. Uh, but do you have a huge presence in terms of a very relevant subject area such as medicine, healthcare at the moment? What are the key areas for you guys at the moment? Right, so um, I can't really say from King's perspective because uh, I work for residences, obviously. Yeah. But um, I, I can tell you that, um, you know, King's um, obviously is a world uh, known university, a high rank university in the world. And, um, you know, like my understanding is like we have, um, so we're very uh, famous in uh, nursing, um, you know, in the subject of nursing and uh, medication uh, you know we have guys Cam uh, well guys campus has a guys hospital on site um, but if anyone wants to get um, get in touch with uh, King's admission and you'll be able to get more information about um, you know anything you want to know. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, I, I kind of knew that answer was coming, but I've got to ask it. It's, it's just one of those things. So look, Christy, Matt, thank you very much. Um, it, it's been very good session. Um, loads of different questions, loads of different answers. For those that are watching on social media as well, we have got all your details. We will forward them over to both Matt and Christy at Urbanest and to King's College as well. They will be in touch just to answer any questions you may have. Um, if you do want to sign up, for the £400 voucher, as well as um, obviously other incentives. Um, please make sure you do that and register your interest by the end of August. But for now, Matt, Christy, thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to explain the uh, the upcoming postgrad um, sessions we've got coming up, postgrad insight sessions. Um, next week, if you've got some interest in um, Italy, um, European study, we've got a study in Italy session coming up. That's next Wednesday. Uh, the week after, we have a study in Manchester special, which will focus... Uh, Manchester Metropolitan University. Week after, another study in London special. All you people watching today might be particularly interested in that one. That will feature Kingston University in the south of London, followed, followed by a study in Scotland with Glasgow. Um, and then we have our UK Festival Week, which at the end of October, we'll see various different universities take part in webinar sessions, which will enlighten you into what it's like to study in the UK. But please see our social media channels. Please see our website for more information on that. And if you do have any questions, please do get in contact, whether it's on the social media pages to my email address, gareth at postgradsolutions.com or head over to postgrad.com where we'll have more information. For now, thank you very much. A huge thank you to King's College um, Urban S today sponsors for making this session happen today. It's been very good and we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.